This is Dr. Kalra. So I'm going to show you today how to make the Kaser arch wire, which stands for Kalra Simultaneous Intrusion Retraction Arch Wire. Uh, this wire is used in a first premolar extraction case where you need maximum anchorage of the molars and you want to simultaneously intrude and retract the six anterior teeth. So I'm going to show you um, how to make this wire. So these, I marked the wire here. This is the distal of the canine bracket and that's the mesial of the molar bracket. So you place a wire halfway between these two marks or actually halfway between the distal of the canine and mesial of the molar and you place a mark there. Now what you do is you, you're making a loop in this wire. So this loop, you start the loop like one millimeter in front of the center and you um, hold the wire and you bend it up 90 degrees. At the same time, you're bending it a little bit, like about 10 degrees to the buckle. So this is your first bend. You uh, hold it here, you make a loop that's about seven millimeters long and two millimeters wide. So it's a closed loop like this, um, there. And then you bring it back down, around, like this. So this is your basic closed U-loop made in 1925 beta titanium arch wire. This one is from what uh, is called CNA wire. Um, so this is your basic loop. Now, if you were to just close space with this, the teeth are going to tip towards each other, which you do not want. So to prevent tipping of the teeth, what you do is you hold the wire here, you make a 45 degree bend this way and a 45 degree bend that way. So overall, you have a 90 degree bend. Now with this bend, when you place it in the brackets is going to create a moment this way which will prevent the tipping of the teeth. But to increase your anchorage and to give you intrusion, what you do is you go back about four millimeters from the loop and you place another 80 degree bend down about, let's say, yeah, about like that. Okay, now this bend is going to be what's called an off-center V-bend. So this bend is going to be close to the molar. So what it does is it tends to throw the molar back from that bend. So when you activate the loop, the loop wants to bring the molar, tip it forwards, but this bend wants to tip it back. So if you keep the force low, the molar doesn't have a chance to come back because there's a big kickback from this bend. But this bend, when it's sitting in the molar, also gives you intrusion in front. So it acts as an intrusion. And then when you activate the loop, that's your retraction. So your maximum anchorage comes from this bend. Your active retraction comes from that. And also this bend provides you intrusion in the front. Um, so you, there's one other thing you need to do because as you activate this loop, the molar tends to rotate and you don't want the molar to rotate. So you need to put an anti-rotation band. So to put the anti-rotation band, you hold this loop like so in the plier and then you're going to bend it in about 30 degrees from the distal and also 30 or 25 degrees maybe from the mesial. So now you see you have an anti-rotation bend in the wire. And this is going to prevent the molar from rotating. And um, once you're done with that, you basically, you know, place the wire into the, you cut the wire here. This is like too long right now. 
So you can take, you know, this much off from the wire. And so this is how it looks, this way and that way. And then you insert this part into the molar tube. And the first premolar is missing. And the second premolar is not engaged in the system. So the wire goes from the molar to the canine. And when you, when you activate the loop, now you can see when I do this here, so this is how it's going to be in the mouth. But you can see when it's in the mouth like this, this loop is not two millimeters open, but about four or five millimeters open. So if I want to get two millimeters of activation, I only need to bring this loop to here and not more than that. So make sure after you engage the wire in the brackets and you pull the wire back and cinch it behind the molar, the loop should be parallel and not more than that because you're already getting two millimeters of force and you don't want more than that. And then in six to eight weeks, you know, the teeth would have moved. Some of the space would be closed about one and a half, two millimeters, and then you reactivate again to here. And so it needs one activation and generally two reactivations to close the full space. So it takes about five months generally. Okay? All right, thank you.